Uh, so a really warm welcome to everyone who's coming to us from across Australia to our Youth Opportunities webinar today, Coaching Toward a Positive Learning Environment. We're going to start with an acknowledge, acknowledgement of country. Uh, thanks, Mel. Um, so my name's Tom. Uh, I'd like to recognise the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains, uh, the, um, the people who have been living and working on uh, the, the lands that we're meeting on today, that we, we're Zooming from today, have been sharing knowledges, all of their knowledges down from generation to generations for upwards of 70,000 years. So uh, at Youth Opportunities, one of our aims is to be able to do a lot of knowledge sharing and, and giving back to, to people to be able to um, be successful and happy within their lives. And so we do a lot of uh, sharing with our, our clients and partners. So we want to pay respects to elders past, present and emerging from both the uh, of the Ghana people, the Adelaide Plains, and all of the peoples of the lands that you are um, zooming in from from today. Great, thank you, Tom. Um, and as a bit of um, a, a bit of housekeeping here, um, as I've already mentioned, we're going to be using Slido. So there's your QR code to join on your phone, um, and we'll use a Zoom chat as well. We've started recording. We know there are colleagues that. Um, we'll be watching this later. We've got had quite a few registrations, but of course, not everyone can be here live. So I'd like to um, give a really warm welcome to everyone. Um, and we have, we have got people represented from all states um, across Australia today. Um, my name's Mel White. I, I have a teaching background and uh, as a high school teacher and also as a leader in uh, graduate teacher development. My role, however, at Youth Opportunities is as one of the uh, many trainers for our personal leadership program, which is our very key program in the organisation. I also coordinate the Community 360 element of the program. This is actually the wraparound support and resources and development of teachers and parents and caregivers. Uh, for our young people to thrive through and beyond the personal leadership program, um, these adult champions in their worlds are guided through various workshops like the one we're running now, as well as webinars and newsletters. And I'll hand over to Tom to talk about his role. So my role at Youth Opportunities, I'm the senior trainer here, so it's my um, job to be able to help all the new trainers go through an initial training course to get an understanding of uh, all the work that we do and uh, our program and how to facilitate and, and help young people to um, achieve their goals. I do on ongoing training with our training team and staff and we put a lot of investment and time into them to be able to uh, deliver the best programs possible. Uh, I also still continue to work in programs because I think it's really important that um, um, I'm there at the, you know, the coalface of everything and making sure that I'm fine tuning my skills and making sure that it's not just me telling people what to do, but it's also um, keeping those skills, you know, at the best that I can do it. And it's also good for role modeling for other people within that. So, uh, I, and I tend to do a lot of the um, helping out in lots of different ways to uh, support people to succeed within uh, what we do. So I, I love my job. I've been doing it here for 17 years and I've been so privileged to see all the um, results and, and the, the lives that we've changed through this uh, course that we do. Thank you, Tom. So I wanna tell you a little bit about Youth Opportunities. Um, uh, our aim is to equip uh, young people with lifelong skills uh, and habits and attitudes that help them to succeed within their education work and just in life in general. Uh, we've been around for over 25 years and working alongside of our education partners, we have delivered our programs to over 16,000 uh, young people across Australia. And uh, through our personal leadership program, and we have wraparound services that help support people to have uh, different strategies and ideas to take control of their lives and to be able to contribute positively within their school environments and their communities. Uh, you can see down there we have our Marshman Foundation as well. The Marshman Foundation uh, is our, our research and development arm and they uh, look after the integrity of the, the content that we deliver and develop 
uh, new ways of delivering things and then youth opportunities itself is uh, the delivery side of things. So we have those as two separate organisations, but they work very closely together and, uh, and we share the same offices and we collaborate every day. Great. Thanks, Tom. And so you've heard a little bit about us and our organisation here at Youth Opportunities, but we'd love to get a sense of where you are in the world. Um, this is where we're going to use Slido. So there's that QR code again, if you haven't had a chance to join already. Um, if you can please pop into the event and you will see this question come up um, for you to answer and we will see where we are in the world pop up on our screen. Thank you. So we've got um, local people here in Adelaide where we're based. So feel free to jump on and share. Here we go. Mittagong, Melbourne. Coming from far and wide. And later on you'll hear hear about other states of course that have been involved in our program thank you thank you for those details we'll keep hearing and seeing where people are from melbourne's well represented if you know how a word all works uh, the words that have come up more often are the larger ones so great to see excellent and our team have just been in Brisbane training some teachers that you'll hear about shortly. Fantastic. Thanks so much. And look, if you've got any issues with Slido, do feel free to share in the chat where, you, where you're coming to us from today. Fantastic. Thanks so much, everyone. And feel free to keep keep popping those places in there because um, we'd certainly love to capture that um, as we keep moving through. We'll use Slido again shortly. All right. So today we are connecting with you as leaders in your in your schools uh, to have a conversation about what you're observing um, with your teenagers that you're working with. We're going to be focusing on what we recognise as their common strengths, um, their ongoing challenges, those that you observe, those that your teachers are observing. Um, and of course, our focus is to really hone in on strategies of creating a positive learning environment that support your, your young people to thrive, but also your staff as well. So our intention is to uh, focus on communication strategies, uh, building on what you know to build those strong relationships with students. We're going to be also really um, sharing part of our program and talking about how we harness changes in the teenage brain to develop habits for thriving. We're going to introduce to you a really core part of our personal leadership program, and that's the coaching model, um, a tool that is really about um, supporting our young people with their positive and also lasting uh, growth that they make individually. And finally, we're going to go into detail about an opportunity for you and your school um, in regard to a free access to our personal leadership program. All right, so again, really wanting to capture your voices here. So we're playing along again in Slido and there's the question for you right there in your school, what makes a young person successful? So what, what is your perspective on this? What do you notice? What are the qualities, what are the attributes of your young people that really make them successful? And we know that that word successful is a very broad definition. Um, it's not just one thing. And it's certainly something we explore in our program, getting them to define their own success. Thank you for someone kicking that off there, independence. Fantastic. I, I can only imagine you're all nodding along. It's, um, it's a whole oh, range of things. I love that word intentionality. Mm. Related to those clear goals, no doubt. Fantastic, thank you. Resilience, not surprising, coming up strongly. Rich, certainly... close, closely aligns to that as well. Mm -hmm. You bet. Emotional intelligence. 
Right. Excellent, thank you. That's a really nice capture. And no doubt, whatever you typed, you're agreeing with the things that other people have shared as well. So let's flip the question now and think about this one here. What are the challenges your students face in being successful? So I guess what is getting in their way? What are those common things, obstacles that are really preventing them from seeking out and achieving their own success? Yeah, mindset. Yeah, so in relation to their skills, thank you. You bet our mental health has an impact. Can be a big challenge for a lot of our young people. An unfortunate theme throughout our schools in Australia. Mm. Lots of challenges there. Yeah. Yeah. It's really a really useful capture, a great brainstorm there. And again, that you're no doubt nodding along to what others are sharing from the schools where, where they're working. Thank you so much for sharing those. All right, so that really kind of sets the scene of what you're bringing and your perspectives of your young people as we move into this section on the teenage brain. Over to you, Tom. Yeah, so it was um, uh, for a long time. It was believed that the um, the, the brain fully developed at a um, once puberty hit and in that sort of early um, stages of teenage years. But uh, but as it's more commonly known that the the teenage brain is still developing at a really rapid pace, and it's not just like hormonal changes which are driving things, but it's actually the um, it turns out that the the changes in the brain of, often um, uh, have an influence over how students communicate, young people communicate, and and how they feel. Um, so, and the the uh, re uh, recent research has, uh, and through things like MRI uh, scans, have shown that um, the brain isn't fully developed until like the mid twenties, and um, for for males, it, even further, like up into like 28, 29, 30. So, um, it's no wonder that we're seeing some really challenging behaviours or bewildering behaviours with the uh, um, with students at this age. And I just want to add in as well, I'm a, a father of two teenage daughters, so I definitely understand how all of this works. Uh, so you can see on the screen here, um, um, uh, we've got some imagery around the brain. Now underneath there, it, it, it shows uh, synaptic connections that are being made. So at birth, there's um, these connections are fairly limited, but obviously uh, young people are, are taking in information and developing these neural connections um, very rapidly. And by the time they're six years old, there's this really complex network and of uh, different uh, information streams and, um, and pathways. As we get into the teenage years, um, uh, there's a, a process that happens called synaptic pruning. So it's the trimming off of these uh, these connections that don't get used as much or, or aren't as um, uh, widely important. It's a little bit like if you're pruning um, sort of the, um, the dead parts off a, a rose bush or whatever, and just trimming it up so it's um, working more streamlined and functioning properly. So um, there's lots of changes that are happening um, through this process. And Mel, if you go onto the next screen, um, this links into this concept of neuroplasticity. So um, neuroplasticity is the, the brain's ability to uh, reorganize, remap, rewire itself, uh, creating these neural pathways that, um, that people um, use to form um, habits in their thoughts and functions. And uh, you can see on the screen there, there's a girl who's got a, a blindfold on. So if somebody were to wear a blindfold for two days, um, their visual cortex would uh, start to reorganize itself and, uh, and then it would go through a process of engaging um, uh, more of the uh, connections to sound and touch. And these neural pathways, um, they'll send signals through the ear to the, oh, and I hope I say this right, occipital lobe, um, where, uh, the visual uh, information is processed. And so it gives people a more of a, um, a spatial awareness and understanding of what's going on around them, even without that, um, the, the visual. 
if you were to take that blindfold off, those new neural pathways that have been created to, to uh, give you a sense of like uh, spatial awareness, uh, within 12 to 24 hours, they're all uh, completely gone. So this can happen um, very quickly. And as the teenagers, they're influenced by so many different things within this period um, that for them to be able to consistently make um, um, good habits, whether it's within their thinking or their actions, um, these pathways can get strengthened as they uh, repeat these processes. And it's one of the things that is a, a, a major part of what we do, and we call it one of the golden threads as well. Thanks, Tom. So if we're really thinking about our, our teenage brains and what's happening for our young people, uh, and we're also thinking about the theme of our webinar, which is around creating those positive environments, let's think about this question here. Just try to imagine the young people you work with, what do you think um, presses their buttons? Just think, have a bit of a, a think about the things that you think presses their buttons and potentially leads to um, leads to behaviour that is where they're not engaged and there's not that positive culture in the classroom. So you've got those thoughts with you. And now um, I'm going to share with you, these are a couple of students that actually work through the personal leadership program. They're going to share with you um, their perspectives of uh, things that, that can press their buttons as a young person. I'm Letitia and today I was asked what presses my buttons in the classroom and my biggest thing is when teachers take their stress out on students it makes me feel really upset and it actually like makes me hesitate to ask any further questions because you know you have that whole just tension there and it's upset. I think a way we could do to solve this is maybe teachers communicating better in better like ways or maybe students communicating to teachers more. Thank you. <laughs> And here's a second student. So just take a note of not only the themes that you're hearing, um, but also the way that these young people are communicating their challenges. I was asked the question today about what pushes my buttons and it is teachers singling you out in front of the whole class. This makes you feel very uncomfortable and embarrassed and maybe they should pull you out privately to speak about your work instead of doing it in front of everyone else. Okay, so the, so the insights that have been shared bravely by these students uh, as, as leaders in your schools, I'm sure you may have observed um, the impact of the types of communication these young people are talking about um, on, on learners and the challenges that affect that positivity of the learning environment. We know what um, can push our buttons as teachers um, if, where students aren't engaged. They might be disruptive and showing behaviours that make it difficult uh, to teach. Um, and equally watching these videos, we can see that the way that we as adults communicate with young people has an impact. So communication can be very complex. Um, and as you can see in the screen, we've got um, uh, a graph there. Uh, the reality is, is that when communicating with uh, with uh, young people, it's not as simple as just that, the conversation. Uh, there's a, they interpret a lot of things that we do. And as humans, we, we don't always get this right, particularly if we're um, having a conversation with somebody where their interpretations may be different than what we expect. Uh, you may have seen within your roles uh, in the schools that some people can do this very well with students and then other people can find it quite challenging. Um, and, and different students are easier and, and more difficult to uh, communicate with. Um, one of the things that we aim to do is uh, we've got so many different strategies of, um, of working with communication and, uh, and getting them to understand the cause and effect of their communication and how to be more effective within it. And it can be some really simple um, changes that can have a big impact, not only on themselves, but the people around them. Um, so just thinking back to what the young people in the video said, um, what did you notice about um, how they shared their concerns with communicating with teachers? And you can put any uh, comments in the in the web chat if you like. But there's a lot of things that um, come up that if uh, if people are working on the same page and are relating to each other, it, it makes it a lot easier. So thanks, Mel. 
So um, with this in mind, we're obviously talking a lot about our personal leadership program, which is at the heart of what we do at Youth Opportunities. And I want to share with you an example of how some of the young people feel um, as they come into the program. And I'm going to let you read this um, quote here, first of all, from Charlotte. And again, we'd love you to engage in the chat for this. If you're recognising some of these themes, you, they're really familiar to you with the young people you're working with, please just put a, a Y or a yes in the chat that you can um, recognise these themes. Here's another young person and how they were feeling about the program as they began. There's a real awareness as these young people come into the program about how they're feeling about life in general. And these, um, you know, unfortunately, these are really common things. All right. And finally, this student, Matt, as he came into the program. As you can see in the chat. Again, feel free to put a wire. Yes, thank you for those that are interacting there. The themes you heard were related to low self-esteem, motivation, mm. um, lack of direction, struggles with keeping up, feeling organised, fear of speaking with others or what others thought of them, and especially not belonging, which I know came up earlier when we were talking about challenges. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for sharing in the chat there motivation a big big theme mm. all right Tom's now going to share with you this um, really crucial tool in our program about the coaching model over to you Tom so um, uh, I talked about a, a golden thread that we had through our program which was neuroplasticity before uh, a lot of people uh, talk to us about um, how do you make so many uh, how do the students make so many changes when such, in such a short period of time. Well, we have a lot of um, uh, underlying frameworks and processes that we follow to help that. And uh, this coaching model is one of the key ones within this. Um, and uh, it, it's a step-by-step -step approach of how to engage with a young person. And we do this from when we uh, first meet them in our onboarding uh, through to them graduating and beyond. So if you wanna jump to the next slide for me now. So this is our coaching model. Uh, we, we begin from the bottom, which is around relationship. And you can see that there's, um, the, there's relationship steps within there around connection, empathy, having respect and trust. Uh, we have goal congruence as the second step, uh, strategy, agreement, reinforce and validate and review and reestablish. And all along the way, we're building and developing that relationship that we work with. So, next slide. Uh, I'd just like you to think about um, uh, people in this world who you would have um, a good personal or professional relationship with, even if you hadn't met them. So I want to tell you a little story about something that happened to me um, uh, at the end of last year. Uh, I uh, was delivering an, uh, an ITC session, an onboarding session for new trainers, and I cracked my tooth and I had this incredible amount of pain. Uh, and I uh, moved to a different area and I had to engage a new dentist. It always amazes me that um, I'm willing to let, or people are willing to let um, somebody who they haven't met put a big needle in their mouth and drills and, and do all of this work on them. Um, without even having these sort of base level things, uh, this actually meeting him or spending time. But if we go into the, the next steps, you can see that um, having that connection with the person, so that person has a, a, a service or something to offer me that um, is gonna be beneficial to me. Uh, within uh, a relationship, having good empathy can, um, can build that um, elements of trust and respect and connection as well. So 
And you can imagine if, uh, if the dentist didn't do what they wanted to do or um, uh, didn't do a very good job, uh, I'd be um, really reluctant and I probably just would not go back and see them. So uh, having all of these elements work and the how, how we treat young people is really important because if we have that strong relationship connection with them, that gives us leverage to be able to help them to, um, to achieve their goals. The second step of the coaching model goes into uh, having goal congruence. So we just want to make sure that we're on the same page as them, uh, understanding what their goals are. Are they aligned to what we um, do as an organisation? Uh, do they really want to achieve these goals? Um, and then we want to um, uh, be able to understand uh, all the different elements. And we do this through um, uh, the, the stepping stones to be able to get to this. So these are the building blocks um, around the motivation. Uh, I think Edwina put something in the um, uh, the, the chat about um, that motivation, lacking motivation. Having that why, why do they want it, um, is what's the motivating factor to um, the thing they want, whether it's confidence, uh, better school grades, better communication. We want to be really clear on these things as well, because if somebody said to us, "We want to," I want to get more confidence, that's a fairly ambiguous term. So we need to um, question and unpack like what that is. If they, uh, I often ask the question, if you got to the end of the program and you had all the motivation in the world, what are the types of things you could do? So then I get a clear understanding of what the thing they're working towards. And we also want to make sure that they understand the benefit, how that's going to help them. Um, so they might just tell the, us that straight out or we might ask questions around, oh, how might that help you at school? How might that help you at home? Do you reckon that's going to have any impact on your future? So, um, and it says down the bottom, double check, check and double check about the um, agreement because um, we don't want to move forward unless we really have that uh, goal congruence in place. The next step is around a strategy agreement. Um, we use clarity a lot in this. We want them to be um, uh, clear on uh, how the strategy is going to uh, help them to get to their goal, uh, have clarity on the actual uh, task that they're undertaking. The disclosure side of things is about uh, understanding if there's going to be any challenges, problems, concerns that might stop them from actually doing the goal. Uh, so we want to create a sp safe space for them to talk about it. And then are they actually committed to doing it? Um, are they gonna take ownership? Are they gonna um, really go away and do it and not just say, yep, I'm gonna do it and then just forget about it for the full week. Following that, we uh, do the check-in stage, which is the reinforce and validate. So it could be um, just recognizing some of the great things that they're doing. Uh, it could be helping them to uh, remind them of the challenge and if they're doing it. Uh, yeah, check in and see if they are you know, still committed into doing it. And if they have any problems or challenges, we need to listen to them and, and validate and normalize those things. And if we can do that, it just helps them to uh, keep on top of um, what they're working towards. And then the final step we look at is the review and reestablish. So once we've got to a point and have a conversation, have they completed their goals? Is this something that they want to uh, continue to do if they haven't completed it? Or do we need to make adjustments? Maybe it's even that they need to uh, start a new goal and do something different. Or if they've completed their goal, what's the next step? How are we gonna build on that? How can we um, further improve it? Uh, so that's the coaching model. And, uh, and I've worked with literally thousands of young people with this and, and just having some of these conversations. I had a, a guy in my program who was addicted to his phone um, essentially, and you'd always be on it in class. And uh, and his teacher, who I was working alongside, she was like, um, Daniel, get off your phone. Like, you're being so rude. And uh, and we were just talking about uh, one of our conversational techniques. Uh, it's a problem-solving technique called the I've got a problem technique. And I said, Daniel, do you mind if I use this with you right now? And I was like, I knew that he had a, um, a part-time job. So I was like, I, want, I really want you to get the most out of this. You know, do you want the same? And he's like, yeah, yeah, of course I do. And I was like, well, um, I've noticed that you're on your phone a lot um, and it seems to be pretty distracting. I noticed that you, well, I know that you have a job as a, a detailing cars. Uh, how do you, you know, stay on top with, of things when you're detailing cars? 
And he's like, oh, well, you know, when, when the cars come in, like I'll just fully focus on it, work really hard. And then I'll, um, uh, the car goes and then we'll, I'll just check my phone, uh, answer a couple of messages and then get stuck back into it. And I was like, so that works for you? Do you think you could use that um, in this class right now? Oh, yeah. Uh, do you mind if I just like, finish off this thing? Yep. Put a message and then put his phone down and engaged. Uh, and my co-trainer, the, the co-trainer I was working with, the teacher, she was, her jaw dropped. She goes, oh, my goodness, I don't get goal congruence. I don't actually ask any questions. And now I'm not saying that this is a quick fix and Daniel was perfect after that. He, but it was those conversations that helped him engage. And we, and we got to use this step-by-step -step approach all the way along to help people to make sure that they're connected into their thing, into their goals, have reasons for doing it and get them to have some agency in those decisions. And when they do that, that helps them to take ownership and, uh, and work towards their goals. Thanks so much, Tom. The coaching model is such an important part. Like Tom said, a golden thread through our 10-week personal leadership program. Um, I shared with you earlier some quotes from young people, only last term actually, um, who, who started the program and how they were feeling at the start. I want to share with you the impact of that 10-week uh, personal leadership program, including the coaching. Uh, firstly, on Charlotte, I'm going to let you read that quote yourselves. And we could share so many quotes that are similar mm -hmm. in regard to how our young people have turned around the way they're feeling and really taken on um, what is personal leadership. 